In this third video, we will use Newton's second law to continue to solve problems, this time using kinetic friction. The problem has now become the man exerts the minimum force to move the crate and maintains that force as the crate moves. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the floor is 0.417. And we ask first, what is the crate's acceleration? And then, how much force must the man exert to move the crate at a constant velocity? Well, as always, the problem solving process with Newton's second law first involves drawing a diagram showing all the forces acting on the object. The diagram is unchanged from our previous example. We still have four forces acting on the crate. We have the weight force downward, the normal force straight up, the tension force that he is applying going upward at a 32 degree angle to the horizontal, and then the friction force, although for this application it will be the kinetic friction force. Notice the direction of the kinetic friction force to the left because we know that the crate is going to be moving to the right. The second step in the problem solving process is to select a coordinate system. We will stick with the coordinate system that we've had previously. There is no reason for us to change with X being the horizontal direction, positive X being the direction the crate will move to the right, the vertical direction being the Y direction with positive being upward. Again, chosen arbitrarily because the crate is neither moving up nor down. The third step is to ask ourselves, do any forces need to be broken up into components now that we have a coordinate system? And then to write out formulas for those components. And again, the process is unchanged. Only one of our four forces must be broken up into components. That's the tension force. An X component and a Y component. And just as we did before, we can use the trigonometric functions to write out formulas for those components please refer to the first video in this series for how that's done. Then our fourth step, use Newton's second law to find what you need to figure out. So remember we have two formulas really for Newton's second law. That is Newton's second law for forces in the x direction some of the forces in the x direction equals mass times acceleration in the x direction and then for forces in the y direction some of the forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction we're asked to find the crate's acceleration that means the x acceleration because the crate will be accelerating in the horizontal direction there will be no acceleration in the vertical direction. In other words, the crate will not move up or down. So we can say that a y equals zero. So our task is to find a x. Examining the diagram, we see that there are two forces in the x direction, the tension force to the right, the friction force to the left. So we combine them with the tension force x component being positive and the friction force being negative. And that's equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. We know from right here that the x component of the tension is T cosine 32 degrees. We also know that the force of kinetic friction is the coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by the normal force. Just as in the previous problem, we find ourselves in the situation of needing to find the normal force before we can find the friction force. Again, remembering that this is now kinetic friction that we're talking about with a kinetic friction coefficient of 0.417. So now we must find the normal force, but that can be done just as we have done in previous examples by using the sum of the forces in the y direction 
and the fact that the acceleration in the y direction is zero. This means that the forces in the y direction must be in balance, in equilibrium. There are three of them, the normal force upward, the weight force downward, and the y component of the tension force upward. And so we combine those forces with positive upward forces like the normal force, downward negative forces like the weight force, and then a positive upward force from the y component of the tension. Realizing they all need to balance, we can easily solve for the normal force. It is the weight force minus T sine 32 degrees. So now we can take this expression for the normal force and put it in here in the expression for the kinetic friction force. This will make the equation very long, so it's very important to take this very carefully. Don't try to do it too quickly, or you might make a sign error or some other algebra error. So we've substituted in this expression for the normal force. Now we must multiply the coefficient of friction by both of the terms in parenthesis. This gives us the following, T cosine 32 degrees minus mu k mg plus, we have a negative sign and a negative sign, need to be very careful about that, plus mu k times T sine 32 degrees. Now that we've done all the algebra, we are now in a position to actually begin plugging in numbers. Remember, we are told that this force right here is the minimum force required to move the crate in the previous problem. So that's going to be 483 newtons. The cosine of 32 is 0 0.848. The coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.417. The mg, the weight, is 1150. And then we carry it through here for the rest of the equation with the sine of 32 being 0 0.5299. Remember that the mass of the crate we can get from the weight, that's 117, leaving the only variable being the x acceleration, which is what we're looking for. Carefully working through the computation, we arrive at the acceleration in the x direction, which is 0 0.314 meters per second squared. This is a very small acceleration. We exerted the minimum amount of force to get the crate moving, the minimum amount of force to overcome static friction. Notice that the coefficient of kinetic friction is a little bit less than the coefficient of static friction in the previous problem. So there's less kinetic friction than there was static friction, but not very much less. And so we get a very small acceleration. The second part of the problem asks, how much force must the man exert to move the crate at a constant velocity? Well, it's going to be less than 483 because 483 newtons gives us a small acceleration. How much force do we need for no acceleration? Well, if we have a constant velocity, that means the acceleration in the x direction is going to be zero. That means that the sum of the forces in the x direction 
the x component of the tension force minus the friction force, then now that's going to be zero. And so we come to the situation where T cosine 32 degrees minus mu K times Fn is going to be zero now instead of Max, which it was previously. But still, this part has not changed. Even though the crate is moving at a constant velocity in the x direction, it's not moving at all in the y direction. And so the forces are still in balance. We still have this expression for the normal force, and that is still what we can plug in to this equation to get the normal force into the friction force. We still multiply mu k times both of those factors, getting once again this very, very long expression. And again, we have to be careful to avoid the possible sign error here. And all the forces are in balance. Now this time, we're going to be solving for T. We're going to be solving for the tension. We take this factor over here so that it becomes positive. And so we have T times the cosine of 32, which is 0 0.848, plus 0 0.417, the coefficient of kinetic friction, times T times the sine of 32, which is 0 0.5299, and that is going to be equal to mu k mg, which we've brought over here to make positive. Multiplying these two together and then adding to this, we get a total of 1.069 times T. That's equal to 0 0.417, the coefficient of kinetic friction, times the weight, 1150 newtons, which is 479.6 newtons. Solving for T, we get 449 newtons. And so to maintain the crate moving at a constant velocity against the force of kinetic friction, the tension force we exert at a 32 degree angle must be 449 newtons, a little bit less than the force required to get the crate moving in the first place, but we bear in mind the kinetic friction is less than the static friction.